Hello, Bernard Clavier. Hello, good morning, Lilou. <laughs> Thank you for accepting this interview in English. Uh, and this time about avatars, because there's this movie that just came out. And, and it raises a couple of questions as to what is exactly an avatar? How, how do you see that? How do you define that? What, are the, what makes an avatar? Well, let me tell you right away, I haven't seen the movie and I have no intention to okay. so far. That's, <laughs> so fine, I, that's fine, that's fine, that's even better. So t tell us, what is an avatar yeah. for you? Well, technically, an avatar is a divine intervention. Is an incarnation of the divinity. That is, God taking the appearance of a human body. Only the appearance, because this human body is not is in no way submitted to the laws that limit us. An avatar doesn't have to eat food. He doesn't have to sleep. He, he can he, he can pretend to take some food to please you if you offer if you offer him or her some food. He will take he will take it in his mouth. But an avatar is totally beyond all the laws of nature, all, all the laws of science. Mm -hmm. An avatar comes from somewhere else. It comes, it may come, I say he but or she, may come from another planet, of course, much more advanced than planet Earth. But in most cases, they come even from another solar system. Okay. So they are, okay. they are divine specialists. They are called for help, and who calls them? The let me let me let me call it the hierarchy, the spiritual hierarchy of this planet, uh -huh. who is in charge of the evolutionary process of this planet. When it is confronted to overwhelming problems, they call for help. They call avatars. They have to resort to, you know, when you have a problem in the street, you call the, the, local, uh, the local policeman. Mm -hmm. When you have a big problem, you call the, the ministry, or you call the, the, you know, or even the president. So, in that case, humanity is, is now faced with enormous problems. I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't make the list because you know the list. We, we, we are facing, we, 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 are, we are on the verge of destruction. We could destroy humanity and all the planet in, in, in minutes, you so, see? So these Just avatars are physical people helping right now the evolution of consciousness? Exactly. They are, they are spiritual specialists and they work, they have their, their way of working. Some of them are anonymous. We've never heard of them. We don't even know their name. Some others are well known, are even very, very famous. Like we, we've all we've all heard about uh, Yogananda, the the famous um, yogi uh, who who wrote the the autobiography of a yogi, the, the this famous book. We've all heard of uh, Sai Baba, who is still alive. We've all heard of uh, Ramana Maharshi. Etc. Etc. Buddha, Buddha, Jesus, Buddha. Jesus Christ. It, yes, if you go for, if you go further in back in history, we've we've heard of Buddha, of Christ, of Krishna, Rama, Hermes, etc. Okay. Shankaracharya. They were all avatars. avatars. So, the, so, so they are born in a physical body, and they represent the divine on this planet, and they have a mission to help. Exactly. They have. They came with a mission. We don't have to know the mission. They know it, and they know how they are gonna do it, and they do it. So, what and are the, the criteria? Because what, what are the different things that makes them an avatar? So, so. Well, the um, the Eastern tradition defines an avatar as being four things: omnipresent. An avatar may appear anywhere, at any place, at any time, or in different places at the same time. 
omnipresence. In the same body. No, they can even take different appearances. You see, it can be the same body, the same appearance. Sai Baba is known to have to have appeared in different places in the world, while at the same time he was talking to people in India. Yeah. At the same time. So there are some, there, 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 there some, and this is a little side subject, but there are some uh, things uh, said about Sai Baba, for example, related to children and some testimonies, etc. So how do you... Well, yeah, I know, I know about that. I cannot prove, I cannot prove to you the status of Sai Baba. Sai Baba is the is an enormous avatar like the world has never seen before. He is an enormous spiritual being, and he's totally, totally beyond any <laughs> sexual problem. I mean, I have to laugh. Because this is so incredible. But I tell you, I, I take it easy. I, get, I take it easy. And Sai Baba take, takes it very, very easy. We don't care. People, some people feel the need to, to criticize, to, to tell the, the worst things about, about the most beautiful beings or you know or, or about ideas some people are disturbed by ideas by and some of them some of the people who criticize sai baba have even been devotees before mm -hmm. they were so okay. it so looks we, like we finished that little bracket yeah. yeah okay but the history history will tell you very soon the truth okay the truth will be okay. known about Sai Baba, and I, I'm very confident about that. So the second criteria yeah. to define an avatar after omnipresence is omniscience. An avatar has absolute knowledge. He knows every single thought of yours. He knows, he knows everything you've done in your life. He can tell you right away, oh, Lilu, I remember when you were in America on that day you were with your friend John and uh, when you when you said that on that day and uh, I know you I know on that day you you f you felt pain and you suffered or I I was with you and the people with the reaction of people is they burst into tears mm -hmm. because how can a, how can a, a man have never seen know everything about me every thought I, I've ever had in my life and and Sebab answers, of course I know you because I've made you. Because he is God. An avatar is God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So an avatar can speak all languages. He knows he knows everything. He knows Shakespeare. He's never read Shakespeare. He's never read Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. He's never read any books. He he, he, he he doesn't need to read books. He knows everything. So this is only so side. Say bye bye in French. Uh, no, he spoke to me in Eng in, in English actually, ah. but uh, well, that's easy, you know. He he doesn't make miracles twenty four hours a day, but he's able to to make miracles. So this because this, the third criteria after omnipresence, omnipotence is omni uh, after omnipresence and omniscience yeah. is om omnipotence. Uh -huh. Sai Baba is known for his miracles. He's famous for his miracles. He can manifest anything out of thin air. He can, he can create for you a, a statue, a, a, a picture. When people take a, a photo of him, sometimes he say, no, no, no need for camera. He does this. He does this and up, he gives you a picture. And oh, he, he does this and he gives you a ring. He's a magician. Well, some people call him a magician. Yeah, he's a divine magician. Well, these are no tricks. These are no miracles. This is just a spontaneous expression of his divinity. This is normal for him. These, these, are, these may look for, like tricks for us because we are so limited in consciousness. No, but, but for we his, can, we, some people think uh, that uh, human beings are magicians in life. Can yeah, achieve they are. being a magician. That's the ultimate yeah. uh, archetype. Yeah, so sure. But I tell you, when you're near Sai Baba, and you and you witness his miracles, I tell you, you have no more doubts. 
and millions of people have witnessed uh, his divinity and the expression of his divinity. And the fourth criteria after omnipotence is omnifelicity. Omnifelicity means that an avatar is absolute love. Love with the capital L. Mm -hmm. You have in, 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 in when, when an avatar looks at you, you have in his eyes or in her eyes the love of a million mothers for her children. Mm -hmm. And this is just indescribable. Do you think you have we have the capacity to become avatars ourselves or is there different um, is there different stages towards becoming yeah. avatars? Oh yes, but we are talking about millions of years of evolution before becoming an because <laughs> before becoming an avatar you will have first to finish your evolutionary process on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, an avatar comes from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. an so avatar what, comes what does it require then on planet Earth to finish an evolutionary process? Well, technically, it takes you to go through five main steps called initiations. Uh -huh. Initiations. There are five initiations, main initiations on Earth and when you've, when you've passed the fifth initiation, you've become what people call an enlightened master. Okay, without is, going into too much details, what are those five steps or what are the last ones? Well, uh, well... Is it, you, is, it, is it being uh, unconditional love or being love at yeah. any time? Uh, yeah. Letting go of the ego, of uh, awakening, it, of going to fifth dimension. I mean, is all that that? Yeah, you're right. This is this is it. Uh, this process involves the development of and the expression of total unconditional love, and the and the loss of the ego. Okay, this is this is something. Uh, um, how could I define the, the, the initiations? Uh, well, we would have to... to, to yeah, we to could go in another to, time. So once, yeah. so once those are done, then, then what? Then you are not limited... Well, you know, when, you, when you're finished with school, yeah. you don't have to go back to school. No more school. No more planet Earth. No more so that it is. That is, you are freed from the incarnational uh, will okay. you have you don't have to to be born again and again and again anymore you are free from the incarnate the incarnational will and so you go to another school and another school can be and is another planet more advanced than planet Earth, because they are planets less advanced than planet Earth. So are Earth. you saying that there is lives on different planets other than planet Earth? There is life on each and every single planet in the universe. That is, that is the answer. Okay. <laughs> so how everything, does, yeah. yeah, everything is either human or has been human, or will be human. So we have Martians. On Mars, yes. for example? What's happening there? There are, there are many more inhabitants on Mars than there are on planet Earth. But we can't see Although them. Although Mars, we don't see them, because we are so ignorant that, that we think Reality is limited to what our eyes can see. Uh -huh. We think there is all there is is what we can feel or experience through our senses. For us, matter can be touched, felt, seen. But esotericists know that there are levels of reality 
which cannot be seen but by human eyes, unless you are gifted with the um, clairvoyance or astral astral uh, yeah. sight. You see, um, there are seven levels of matter of um, material reality. I don't know. My English is not very good no, no, here. No, no, no. You're very. Uh, we can understand. I understand you. I we only you know. Will. We only know three three levels of matter. Yeah. We know water, gas, and uh, dense physical matter. You see my desk. If I knock on my desk, it looks like dense physical matter. It sounds like it so too. Got, yes, but there are four more levels of material reality. They are called uh, etheric matter. Uh-huh. And Martians are in physical, etheric physical matter. Uh-huh. That is, we cannot see them, but they are there. Uh-huh. You see? So, and uh, yeah. UFOs, yeah. UFOs yeah. are yeah. visitors from mainly from Mars, also from Venus, who can densify their etheric matter to become visible to human eyes. Yeah. They hence do, hence they those do crop fields. fields. Hence the crop the crop circles. Crop circles. Who are created which are created by again mostly uh, space brothers from Mars and uh, from Venus and a few other planets as well. So based on what you said, so once we're completed with this uh, the school uh, on planet, then we go to other planets. So these guys, uh, these guys, have the same. Um, we're one with them, and they're trying to communicate something to us. Yes, yes, they are here to help. They are again. I like to call them our brothers. Our space brothers, of light. brothers of from other planets, yeah. and that that name involves the that they are n they they can be in no way harmful to us. There are no dangerous visitors from other planets because there is such a, an enormous thought form at 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 the moment. People talk. About uh, rap physical rapture, you see, of physical uh, experiences. Uh, uh, yeah. Don't yeah. I mean? Can, can, this this is all bullshit. Can avatars actually uh, be in contact directly with other uh, beings in other planets? Of course, avatars have have such an uh, indescribable level of consciousness. They they are in touch with beings from many many other planets. While they are here, they are at the same time in touch with realities of the place where they come from, and with the visitors from many many more planets. Okay, so in the process of becoming avatars, then there is the school of another planet and then after that is there another step before becoming an avatar well very few people i mean if you go to sirius which is another solar system for instance sirius is a is a place where many people go after planet earth for instance after planet earth you don't go to mars because many Martians are less advanced than us, ah. spirit, spiritually. Ah. I mean, they are technically they are very advanced. They can visit us physically. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are all more advanced than us. Anyway, the, these are all details. The Venus, Ven Venusians, the people from Venus, 
are extremely, extremely advanced. But after planet Earth, many people go to Sirius. And what I wanted to tell you is that the people on Sirius yeah. are not all bound to become avatars. I mean, uh, no. avatars are, are exceptions. Yeah. Well, the goal of life is not to become an avatar. You see? Yeah, but why isn't there more avatars right now? I mean, some people say there's more angels on this planet, for example, at the moment, because we need help. So aren't we at a time of crisis where there should be more of avatars? Or are we supposed to ourselves open ourselves up and become in our life? I mean, what is the consequence of all this in our own lives? And how, how can we help? consciousness to evolve and to open up here on the planet or do or, or is it only for higher dimensional beings oh no 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 we are all responsible for the evolution of this planet and this starts this starts with our own evolution and this is all there is that we are not born to raise children or to plant a tree or to build a house these are just tools, evolutionary tools. The goal of life is to grow in consciousness and to, to rediscover the purpose of life. You see, this, 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 this is all there is, to become God again. There's only one way to understand God, is to become God again. That is... To, you can put it another way, the goal of life is to realize our divinity, to realize what we are, what we already are. We've, we have never ceased to be divine. It's like a mirror. You see, when you have a mirror and the reflection of the sun in this mirror, if the mirror is dirty, the reflection of the sun will not be clear. So we are the mirrors of divinity. But because we are so imperfect, we are so limited in consciousness, we reflect divinity poorly. So our duty is to clean the mirror. You see, our duty is to perfect our physical body, our emotional body, our mental body, so that we express more and more divinity. We reflect more and more the, the sun, the enormous sun that is God, you see? And we, we express more love, less ego, etc., etc. Until the time when our physical vehicle is so refined, so pure, so clean, that we don't need it anymore. At this time, we, we shed our physical body for the last time, and we don't, need, if we don't even need to be reborn through a woman. We are released. We are God again, and we go somewhere else. Don't tell me... I don't ask me too much details because I don't know them. I am so limited myself. So you see, I give you a few informations I've received myself, but I don't know anything about life on Sirius or on Mars or, or on Venus, you see. I just know that the goal of my life here and now is to express more and more of my divinity, intrinsic divinity. Thank you, Bernard Clavier. Thank you, Lilou.